Hello again. So this is quite an interesting time to be here. And um, being that the month of February is about love, and also for me, freedom, because it has Lincoln's birthday, I um, chose the title today, Be Loved. And it can be looked at both ways, beloved, the way we know that word, beloved, as well as be, period, loved, period. And so I demonstrated this beautiful, wonderful woman that just sang for you. And when we found out we were doing the Sunday together, it was kind of like, la, 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 la. And, and then she said, well, what is your topic title? And I sent it to her and she said, well, here are the lyrics of my song. It's like, be loved. Hello, one mind. Thank you very much. So it is good to be here. And I want to start by saying Sophocles. One word. Uh, I'm pretty powerful there. <sighs> Maybe that echo, that resonance literally went around the world where it needs to be so that people not sitting here in Santa Fe or sitting in the living rooms watching on Zoom have an opportunity to tune in from a higher source to a greater power. And that is really what I'm talking about when I talk about beloved, beloved. So there's an, a higher order taking place even with or without any of my divine intentions. So as I was about to say, Sophocles, says one word frees us of all the weight and the pain of life and that word is love 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 and you know a lot of times when you when a minister starts to talk about the word love you know it's like oh, the cute love the sweet love the romantic love given the state of the world that we live in today I'm going to invite all of you to join me in a concept of a greater love, a capital L love, a love that we need, because then I'm going to quote somebody else. I've used this quote before in, on Sundays, and most people don't know where it's from. By now, I think some people know it more than they used to. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, then and only then will the world know peace. <sighs> Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah, not your typical Sunday morning quote, is it? <laughs> but Jimi Hendrix wrote that. <sighs> and I believe that that is what we need to tap into. Whether you're sitting here with me or you're watching online or you're in some remote area that it is imperative right now that each of us find a way to be beloved, to be at peace. And the quote from Matthew 3.17, the technical King James Bible version, which I'm not a Bible thumping preacher, but I want to give it to you correctly. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Beloved, be loved. That's really what it's about. To be the beloved in whom I am, I am being the higher power, beloved that I am well pleased is simply to be loved. <laughs> Sometimes that's harder than other times. And some of you who know me or have had a Sunday service with me before or go way back to San Diego know that I have on occasion used a signature phrase. And I only use it when it's being called forth, but it, came, it was birthed out of, why the heck am I standing here with this privilege of talking to all of you? And it is simple, how may I love you today? And sometimes when I'd say that, people on a Sunday service are like, oh, that's cute. How may I love you today? No, no, no. It's really about how may I, the beloved in me, love you, the beloved today, today, now, here. To be able to know that expression of love from a greater place, because perhaps many of you have noticed, we are living in really uncomfortable, unsettling times. This is the time for which we are on this planet, so that each of us, each of us, we're all in this together as the one, 
each of us have this opportunity to move to a place of love and peace, we're called to that more than ever, ever, ever before. So when I say, how may I love you today? It is to invoke and invite that aspect of your higher self to a state of the capital L love, not just the romantic love, not just the sweet, you know, cute love, but that love that passes all understanding because we need to get to peace. So I was thinking about how in these unsettling times where, you, you know, one only needs to turn on the news or your social media devices, and it is a call to prayer. And some of you may like prayer. Some of you may know spiritual mind treatment. Some of you may go prayer, sounds too churchy. Whatever it is that you practice or follow, whatever presence that you experience to get to a place of love, peace, wisdom, wholeness, well-being. Every time you turn on the news, every time you look at a new tweet or Facebook post, you have an invitation to love. And I know that that is not particularly easy these days when you look at some of the names and faces that come across you uh, on social media and the news to think about loving them and yet that is our charge. And please remember that whether it's your next door neighbor or your boss or a political leader, when I say love them, I'm not saying you have to be their fan. I'm not saying you have to support them, contribute to them, or even agree with them. But if each of us don't find a place within ourselves that radiates that love and peace, we have more challenges to face. So when we're in this state of confusion and uh, being unsettled and uncertain and somewhat, sometimes <laughs> downright scared, <laughs> I don't doubt that many of you have gone through the past few weeks or <laughs> the past two years with an awareness of life differently. And certainly the news gives us a chance for pause and can stir up anxiety and fear within us. So I turn to Dr. Holmes, Ernest Holmes, our founder. And in the book, This Thing Called You, one of my favorites, on page 75, in case those of you wish to reference it, when you become confused, stop and listen to your inner calm. When you become confused, stop and listen to your inner calm. And you might translate that as when you become frightened, panicked, stop and listen to your inner calm. Turn from the confusion to that deeper something within. Say to yourself, I am submerged in peace. I am surrounded by peace. I am in that awareness of peace where there is nothing but peace. Peace, deep, calm, undisturbed. Now, that's a long quote. But if you can remember that when you turn on the news or the social media, or you hear someone standing in line talking about what may be conjecture, what may be opinion, what may be misinformation, I am submerged in peace. Because what do we know and what do we teach in this? The I am that I am is that, is that direct connection to God. You wanna talk about a download? Try the I am. Most people think about Wi-Fi. I think about, I am. And when I get to that I am, then all of the stuff that's going around me, and there's a lot, suddenly takes a different perspective. I get to that place of the I am, and oh yeah, oh yeah, I know who I am. I am the beloved in whom God is well pleased. So I come right back to the be loved, be loved. And if there is something within you, individually, personally, that is standing in the way of you loving yourself, today, right here, right now, is the time to release that. You don't need, you don't need a, a minister, a psychiatrist, a, 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 a spouse, somebody to tell you that you are whole, perfect, and complete. I love you just the way you are. That is essential for you to do. And I'm going to read a quote from Buddha. You can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and affection than you are yourself. And that person is not to be found anywhere. You, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe deserve your love and affection. 
You yourself deserve that love. So whether or not you thought you needed to earn something differently in order to have that unconditional love, I write you a giant universal permission slip. You've got it. Please accept it. Take it on face value. What have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? If I'm saying to you, you are the beloved in whom God is well pleased, and you're over here saying, yeah, but you don't know about my childhood, and you don't know that he didn't graduate, and you don't know that I don't, da 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 you are arguing for your limitations, and frankly, the world doesn't have time for that. You don't have time for that. We are here now together. That's no small task given the past two years. Think about that. There is a reason we have come here together, whether it's in this room, whether it's online, whether it's on the planet at this particular time, we chose to be here now. Thank you, Ram Das. Be here now, be loved, be loved. So again, whatever may be standing in the way of you letting someone love you, whether it's a, a neighbor, a, a, a bestie, whether it's your significant other, whether it's yourself, let us look at dissolving that. We all believe in miracles, right? I believe in miracles. Hot chocolate. I think that was in the 70s. Now I'm dating myself. Okay, but those of, who know, those of you who know me know I hear music and songs. It comes in my head, and those are the pictures that come to me. So I believe in miracles, and I believe in a course in miracles, and this is our life course. Whether you're following a course in miracles, whether you're following science of mind, whether you're following a Quaker, a Buddhist, Zen, whatever spiritual path has called to you, Pause, know that you are submerged in peace, listen to that higher self, and know that you are the beloved, be loved, in whom God, infinite mind, one mind, Buddha Atman, is well pleased. And when we teach, as we do in Science of Mind, that we are one with God, that all that God is, I am, then it is upon us, incumbent upon us, to love oneself. It's not corny, it's not arrogant, it's not egocentric. It is about loving the capital S self of who we are, the higher self, with our small human S self, the individualized expression of God that we are within that capital S. There was something in this month's Science of My Magazine. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Science of My Magazine, always have been, always will be. It's got everything that you pretty much need to know. And I was reading one of the articles by um, Carol Burbank. She writes a leadership column there. And I read the article, and blah, blah, blah. And then I get to this one sentence. Does that ever happen to you? You see one sentence, and it kind of blows up into large font, and it does this at you. <laughs> this is the sentence that caught my attention. What if our flaws are not devils but exiled teachers. What if our flaws, the things that we don't like about ourselves, the things that we justify to not love ourselves, what if those flaws are not demons, are not bad, are not wrong, but are exiled teachers that we have been suppressing, putting aside, ignoring, because it might be uncomfortable, and yet they have been calling to us to be our teachers. I bet that if you took a moment right now, especially if you online, just take a moment, close your eyes and ask yourself, what is one of those demons or flaws or things about yourself that you think is unlovable? Just let it rest on that. You don't have to go deep. You don't have to realize, you don't have to feel the pain of it. Just one of those things that you think makes you less than. And when you get in touch with that, or if you, if, or like me, sometimes the list starts to scroll up, then you need to ask yourself, what is it about that flaw, that demon, that less than, that keeps you from loving yourself, which, by the way, keeps you from being at peace? 
if you can begin to have a dialogue with that part of your being, that flaw, that demon, that um, less than. I don't like to use the word defect. I know that's used in a 12-step program, and that's, I respect that. But for me, when I hear the word defect, I, I, don't, I don't know how to re <laughs> return from that. So those things that are within me that I dislike, that I judge, that I hold up to keep myself away from the fullness and the allness of God, whatever those flaws, demons are, I'm asking you to make peace with them. I'm asking you to find a way to have a dialogue with them. Because whatever, whether it's one flaw, three flaws, whether it's a flaw that you've had since childhood that you can remember, whether it's something that you're still carrying as an adult, in my humble opinion, it is imperative that we do that. And I said that is we, and I realize I can't, you know, we, you all need to do that. What I can say to you is that I'm having to do that. And certainly the last two years have called forth a need to do that in a different way. We've been forced to in some ways with seclusion and shutdown. And now this transitional phase that we're in, for example, you know, I walked up and I'm, I'm wearing my, my mask. I know I read what the CDC said and I'm still wearing my mask and certain locations require you to wear masks and some don't. And, we're all in a state of flux and it feels a little bumpy and a little uncertain again. And then if you look at the news or you read that and you feel even more uncertain. So in order for us to be clear and strong and be loved, we need a solid foundation. We need to be able to feel like we are on the holy ground that we are on and standing here to know this higher truth. So that I, and I'll speak in I terms for right now, I can be at peace. And maybe you'll relate to that. So that I am not standing in my way of my own wholeness. Whether that wholeness is health, physical stuff, because we've all had physical stuff. You know, I was thinking about this whole process from, you know, pandemic and now where we are in the world. And now are we out of the pandemic? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Wear the mask anyway. And yet there's all a judgment about that. And it feels uncertain. And then when you're someone like me, who is like an introvert and has certain social anxieties, now suddenly you can be mask free and you can hug. I, 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 I don't know if I'm ready. And if you're one of those who feel like I do, it's like, maybe. Don't judge yourself. And don't judge another person. If you see that they're choosing to wear a mask or they're not quite ready to hug and they're still elbow bumping you. Get beyond that to find a place of common ground on that holy ground in order to know peace, in order to know love. Because whatever is standing in the way of you loving yourself, multiply that bazillion times, and that's what's standing in the way of us on this planet, knowing love and peace. And doesn't that seem kind of weird? We, we sometimes wonder, at least I do, as I try and navigate the waters of today, what can I do? Well, yeah, I can, I can maybe sign a petition. I can maybe donate somewhere. And I can post a Ukrainian flag on my Facebook page. I can do all kinds of those things. First and foremost, my charge is to know I'm whole. To know I am submerged in peace. To know that I am beloved. Because if I don't know that, I can't know that for any of you. I can't know that for the world around me. I can't even send that prayer out in authenticity and be genuine to the world that may need it if I don't know it for myself. So I am inviting you, yes, especially you, I am inviting you to join me in that concept of knowing peace. And sometimes that's going to be a moment by moment, hour by hour, thought by thought experience because you'll be doing fine, you'll leave here, maybe you're feeling, you're grooving and oh, God is good, she said nice things, we did a prayer, I heard a beautiful song, blah, 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 and then you go out there and then somebody will turn and cut you off without a signal. You know, those moments that come up, or whatever, because we all have them and we're so aware of them, oh, then that is your call to peace. And you may say, well, Reverend Duchess, if I get peaceful and I bless and release that person who cut me off or who didn't show up or whatever it is, I'm contributing to world peace. 
damn right. Because peace, the song that we sing at the end of these services, peace does and has to begin with me, all of the me's. In order for that to, you know, the rock in the pond as it ripples out, wouldn't it be something to think that if you could do that work, little old you just do that work every day and every way, it gets more and more peaceful, that you could have an influence on the world leaders, on the situations that we're facing? Yes. And that's what this wonderful teaching of science of mind is all about. That's why we teach what we teach. And it's time that we practice what we teach. No, I know, I know. Don't get, if you got offended by that, release it, forgive me, and move on. Right there is an opportunity. You may be doing your own practice. You may be doing your prayer work, and I hope that you are. And so if I called you out on it and you want to get defensive with me because, well, I'm saying it, please. But there are people among you that aren't doing the work. We don't judge them. We stand in the light of this truth, in the fullness of God, in that love, so that we become that beacon of possibility for others to see, to know. As I know my wholeness, and if I stand in it and it's authentic, someone out there is going to look and go, oh, you mean I'm okay just the way I am? You mean I don't have to sit in a lotus position for 20 minutes three times a day, say a certain prayer, hold a certain bead, blah, blah? No, not necessarily. But if that calls to you, whatever it takes to bring you to a place of wholeness and peace, which equals freedom, then you are at choice. Once you get that freedom, you are at choice to be loved, to be loving. You are at choice to be peaceful, to be peace. What a concept that is. I mean, if you really start to practice this, it can get really challenging because of the discipline of, you know, when you, you're talking with someone you love or your best friend, or you're like, and you want to, because you're trying to get that all out, and then you realize you're not at peace. Oh, yeah, I have to stop that too. Yeah. Because we need, I got to correct myself again. I need to do that. And I'm inviting you to join me. I can't tell you what to do, and this wonderful philosophy we follow doesn't tell you what to do. We don't tell you how, what to think. We tell you ways to think, how to think, so that you can examine it for yourself and go, oh, yeah, that feels right. So that you can say an affirmation and you go, yeah, that feels right. But nah, this one doesn't sit, doesn't fit me. Right. We have been given the gift of this weird time it is the gift to find our own self at small s inside the big S self. So, we have gone through a lot. You really should just kind of like pat yourself on the back. You're sitting here, you're listening, you're alive, you're well, you're part of this wonderful thing on the planet. That's no small task. I was thinking about how all of us, you know, as I said before, for some of us, it's like getting used to, I, you mean I don't have to have a mask? You mean I'm allowed to have you? I'm not so sure how to do this. I'm shy. I've been in my closet for two years. In your closet. How many of you, you go in your closet and there are things that don't fit anymore? You go, I mean, I put on certain makeup today and the makeup was all dried out because who needed makeup for two and a half years? So you have things like that that you're doing and you're adjusting. There's, you know, there's a syndrome called PTSD. And I think we have PSSD. I thought about that. Post, no, PPSD, post pandemic stress syndrome. I think all of us have that. And I'm not making light of people who have PTSD from really other traumatic events along the way. But all of us are finding our way beyond PP. That's it. You know what I mean. And if that is the case, then there is a bigger call to love yourself. And the more that you give permission to love yourself, the more flexible you become in loving yourself, then it makes it safer, easier, and funner for others to love you. That's why I say, how am I love you today? Thank you. 
it's always close. There's always things I want to say, and yet there's always other things going on, and I don't even know how to love because there's no big clock for me to follow. <laughs> so I don't want to like be talking forever because you know how ministers are. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We can talk. And it's been over two years since I've stood here. And it's been a longer time since I've seen many of these familiar faces. You're going to tell me that's not surreal? That that isn't a call for love and peace? Yes, it is. And you know what? I'm up to it. Are you up to it? And if you're not, guess what? You have ministers and practitioners and friends, people who will listen to you, people who will embrace you, love you, and pray with you and for you. None of this we have to do alone. For there is that higher awareness. Because behold, I am the beloved in whom God, spirit, infinite mind is well pleased. I am. I think we've got that. I don't think I need to say more stuff. I, I, I'm going to read a prayer later on. What I'm going to ask us to do right now is what I love doing and what all of us can do in a time like this. No matter what is going on on the outside, it's about what we do on the inside. So if, if you would join me and close your eyes, if you're comfortable with that, and online if you're comfortable with that, and just for a moment, breathe. Breath and laughter are the two key things that bring us into present time, bring us into the body temple. And as we take a deep cleansing breath and we're breathing in God and exhaling, I am. That's what Deborah said in the opening meditation. Something as simple as that. And we'll take one more in together. And when you take that breath in, hold it at the top for like three seconds, please. Just hold it there, feel it, expand it, allow it, and then release it. You may even let a sigh out. Especially those of you who are online, you can, oh, oh, and be here now. Be here now, beloved, to be loved. For there is only the one life of God. That life is my life. My life, one life, the infinite intelligence, the infinite heart, the divine mind, all that God as I know God, spirit as I know spirit, or call it by any other name, all that God is. And in this sweet, sacred moment, there is no one inside your head or outside saying, no, you're not. You're not worthy. You're not ready, any of that, hear the still small voice that always says, I am. Behold, you are my beloved. I am the beloved. That's what I'm one with. And so my prayer today includes health and wealth and success and peace and all those things, yes. But to simplify it, to fortify it, my prayer today, to know, feel, and be more of that presence, capital P, presence, to know, feel, and be more of God, call it what you will, God, spirit, one mind, infinite intelligence, use the name, the pronoun that fits for you. So that you don't distract yourself with judgments and dialogue. And know that I am that I am. And today, my prayer for today and the week ahead is to know myself as that presence, as God. And as I do that, what happens is that I know myself as hell. And whatever may be going on in anyone's body temple, what ache, pain, concern, blah, blah, blah. Let it go. Dissolve it. Don't give it any attention and power, at least for this moment. I'm not saying that you're not going to take a prescription or a supplement or see a physician. I'm saying in this moment, whatever ache and pain, heart, mind, or soul, exhale and release it. Know in this moment your wholeness. For I am the beloved in whom God is well pleased. 
and then know your peace. Oh, my body, my mind is at peace because I am one with that, because I'm setting the intention for that. I am whole, perfect, and complete at peace right now. I am submerged in peace. I radiate peace. And in today's topic, as we wrap up the month of February, oh, behold, I am the beloved in whom God is well pleased. I am willing to be willing to be willing to be loved. So for some of you, it's easier to just go, I am willing to be loved. Yeah, come on, bring it on, God, bring on that love. For some of you, you may still be teetering on, can I, will I, should I, could I? Yes. So go back to the, I am willing to be willing to be loved. I am willing to be the beloved in whom God mm -mm -mm, is well pleased. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, I don't know if that's an electronic amen, but I'm almost there. <sighs> and so we take these words, we take the feelings that may have gotten stirred, we take the ideas, the seeds that have been planted, we take all that we are sharing in this conflagration of, of, of consciousness and spiritual center. And we embrace what we can embrace. We release what we need to release. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that I am enough right here, right now. That I have heard what I needed to hear. I've released what I needed to release. I will do that which is before me to do. That is mine and mine alone to do. But I don't do it alone. I do it with the one infinite power and presence of God. Because I am the beloved. And I am willing to be loved. I am willing to be submerged in peace and radiate that from the core of my being to the world around me. Breathe that in. Give yourself permission to know it, feel it, be it. And then join me together as we close this out and say, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are.